Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to tell you about what is perhaps, for some people anyway, the most attractive permanent residency program or at least fast attractive permanent residency program that you can get in the Schengen zone. We're going to cover that. I'm going to go through with you what are the requirements, how long does it take, what are the costs, what are the benefits? How does it apply from you from a tax standpoint? How does it compare to some of the other programs out there so you can decide is it, whether it's right for you or not? So stick around and we're going to cover all of that coming up. Before you do that though, uh, if you have not already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. We try to produce great content for you every day. Check out some of our old videos if you haven't already. And definitely, if you're interested in this subject, if you're interested in, hey, listen, I'd like to get a residency somewhere, I'd like to get a citizenship somewhere, I'd like to optimize my taxes, whether you know, you're know you staying in your home country and you're building an international tax structure to help reduce your taxes as low as legally possible, hopefully close to zero. Uh, if you're interested in you know, asset protection, opening companies, forming bank accounts, or <laughs> forming companies, opening bank accounts, uh, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. There's a link below or you can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. You can send a message through there. Now, let's talk about the subject here. So the country that we're talking about is Malta. Malta has a program, sometimes called the indefinite residency program in Malta. It's basically a permanent residency uh, by investment, okay? Now, what's so special about this program? So most programs, when you get a residency permit in them, what you're getting is you're getting a temporary residency program. Uh, that you know maybe it's renewable you know whether it's every year or every three years or whatever it is uh, ultimately you usually have to renew it for around five years sometimes more depending on the country and after that you get permanent residency and then you don't have to renew so much you don't have the same qualifications okay now I talked in a previous video about how Bulgaria has a program like this you can invest 500,000 euros uh, and get permanent residency pretty quickly uh, of course, we have some of the golden visas that we talk about, which have you know very low minimum stay requirements. Those are typically not permanent residencies. They lead to permanent residencies. So for instance, in Portugal, you have to renew twice before after five years, you can get permanent residency. Okay, so that's something. So the Maltese program is really interesting because you go straight to permanent residency, which is great for this kind of special indefinite residency program that they've got. And uh, that in turn, because it's a Schengen residency. So most of these aren't Schengen, right? So if you're in a situation where you're like, all right, maybe I'd like to be in Germany. I was talking to somebody about that the other day, or I'd like to be in Netherlands or Sweden or something like that, but it's more difficult to get access there. Well, if you have a Schengen visa, then you have access to all the Schengen countries, right? About 24 EU member states, pretty much all the uh, EU countries. Uh, Plus you have pretty good access to Switzerland, Norway, et cetera, as part of this. So, you know, pretty, pretty reasonable body of countries that you can flow freely between without the restrictions of being limited there for being three months every six and so on and so forth, right? So pretty, pretty good stuff. So how does this program work? Well, first of all, there's three, four key requirements, all right? So first of all, who does this apply to? Who can, who can apply? In order to apply, you have to have a minimum 100,000 euro a year income, which you have to prove, or you need 500,000 in assets, okay? More or less net worth, uh, you know, how you prove that, you know, it can be property, it can be, you know, bank statements, it can be a brokerage account, stuff like that, right? So that's kind of your baseline to apply. Uh, and if you're applying for your family, one of the things that's really cool about this program is it does apply for your whole family. And that includes uh, dependents of any age. So there's not a restriction on the age limit of your dependents, but you do, they do have to be dependents. So in other words, you couldn't have uh, a kid who's married, right? That doesn't count. But provided they're dependents, so you, your spouse, your kids, provided they're dependents, can all come under this visa, which is, again, if we compare to, say, the Bulgarian program, Bulgaria, your family doesn't get it. You have to go through this other process for them, which is quite a hassle, right? Uh, in Portugal or something, you can bring other people on, uh, of course. Uh, we like the I bring up Portugal as we like the Portuguese program quite a bit, right? There's lots of benefits. I think it's, it's a good program. Uh, as you're going to see, there's some advantages of Malta. There's some advantages of Portugal, okay? Uh, and if you're interested in finding out, you know, whether one's better for you, again, reach out to us. All right. So from there, what's, uh, what's the next piece? Well, the first part is you need to buy and uh, pay a government fee 
of 30,000 euros. Okay, so you've got a, your fees to do this at the government level, 30,000 euros. Now, some people might say, oh, hey, well, you know, they're thinking of this as an added cost. I certainly kind of think of it that way, so that's, you know, how I relate on it. But in practice, if you go to Portugal or something, uh, you have fees and you have to renew twice throughout that time. So really the fees work out to uh, pretty similar whether you pay the 30,000 in Malta or whether you pay the fees, okay, it's not as much up front in the first year, but you know, as you renew a couple other times, it adds up to comparable amount in Portugal. Uh, Bulgaria would be a little bit less, but again, Bulgaria is not a Schengen country. So, you know, and then again, you don't get the family part. So, so the first part is you pay 30,000 euro fee. The second is you need to invest in a 250,000 euro bond. Okay, now be aware uh, this is a bond that's an investment, so you do get that money back at the end of the, the period, okay? Now, some people want to do that, right? They're going to put the 250,000 euro bond in, okay? To give some contrast, I mean, the real estate investment for the golden visa in Greece is 250,000 euros, so it's the same, right? Uh, but it's obviously a little bit easier to buy a bond than to buy a property. Uh, the properties in uh, Portugal, in order to qualify, are more expensive, right? In that particular case, you're talking about typically uh, 350,000 or up. There is, you can get 280,000, but those are tougher to find, right? It's a less, less common pro uh, prospect. Uh, and it can be 500,000 and up. So you're going to tie up less capital in uh, Malta than you will in Portugal, okay? That's the next thing. Now, if you want, you don't actually have to put up the 250,000 euros. You can put up somewhere between 66 and 75,000, uh, basically having it financed through an institution. Now, the way that this works is basically there's companies. Again, if you're interested, reach out to us, happy to connect you and help to facilitate that process. But what they do is uh, you just pay them the 66 to 75,000 euros, depending on whatever the fee is. Let's call it 75, just for easy numbers. And they go and then they borrow against that. They put it up for you for that period of time and you just lose the 75,000. So the 75,000 is basically their fee for tying up their money for the five-year period or whatever it is on that. Uh, on that. It's kind of like your financing cost, right? But you know, as a result, you don't have to worry about it. So some people like to do that. Other people would rather just pay for you know, the 250,000 for the bond. Either way, whatever works for you, either one works. The third thing that is necessary is you need to either buy a property worth 270,000 euros or more, or you need to lease uh, an apartment for five years minimum, okay? Uh, so that uh, lease needs to be 10,000 euros a year. Pretty typical, right? I mean, what are you gonna get for less than 10,000 euros a year anyway? But you have to have a, a five-year lease. You can change, it doesn't have to be the same one throughout the whole time, et cetera, but basically you have to maintain an apartment there during that, uh, that time. You don't actually have to visit there, so there's no, it's an, what's called an unconditional residency, meaning that you don't have to spend any time in the country. You could go away for five years and you could come back, you know, five years later, you're gonna come back because of the fact that uh, your card has to be renewed, right? So it's not really a renewal process, it's like you get the new card. So it's more like getting a new driver's license as opposed to, you know, in, Portugal, where you have to do another application and pay all sorts of fees, etc. cetera. Uh, the legal fees for putting together one of these indefinite uh, residencies is about 25,000 euros. So that kind of gives you some idea your you know, actual out-of-pocket cost uh, in terms of fees is you know, a little under 60,000 euros. And then you have the money that you're tying up. And of course, you're getting the apartment, right? That's basically where you are. This is... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, pretty decent because again, like for this, you can bring in the family and you have permanent access more or less to the Schengen zone. So we like that. The downside of this, I think, comes on the citizenship side. Now, the citizenship side may, it could be a pro and a con, okay? So the question that you may have is, well, does this lead to citizenship or how easily does it lead to citizenship? When we compare Portugal to Greece, for instance, Greece is a little bit cheaper but it's much harder to get citizenship. In theory, yeah, you spend the time there and you are entitled to it, but they don't really like to give out their citizenship. Whereas in Portugal, it's a much more straightforward path to citizenship after five, basically six years, because five years you get permanent residency and then you can apply for citizenship. In the case of Malta, uh, so Malta has their own uh, citizenship by investment program, right? 
And because of that, they don't want to like compete with their citizenship by investment program by allowing people to just come in on this other program and get citizenship later. So technically, yes, you can get citizenship. Uh, you're probably gonna have to live there for about seven years, right? However, they don't really make it super easy for you. So, you know, you better have spent like real time actually living in Malta, definitely not just uh, having been away. And we don't like to guarantee anything in terms of what you'll be able to get. However, that being said, if you can get it, Malta is a great citizenship, right? The other reason, the reason why I say that it may be better for you not to have it, uh, depending on your circumstances, if you have like another fairly good passport or something like that, is Malta has some pretty good tax incentives. So again, if we kind of compare Greece to Portugal to Malta, uh, Malta potentially has better tax rules than, uh, than Portugal, even with the non-habitual residency regime, and certainly better than Greece under most conditions. And the reason is this, they have uh, something called a non-DOM program that's remittance-based. So basically you can uh, not be taxed on income that you don't remit into the country. That's loosely, maybe I'll do a video on the whole program and how it works in the future. But loosely speaking, you can get very favorable tax treatment in Malta. Certainly better for a lot of people than you can in say Portugal, and uh, certainly for most people better than you can get in some place like Greece. So anyway, that's the summary of the program. If you've got questions about it, I mean, first of all, feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in knowing, hey, which one is the best for you? You know, is Portugal better? Is Malta better? Is Greece better? Is Bulgaria better? Is Latvia better? You know, what's best for you? Happy to have a conversation with you about it, see how we can help you. Uh, in addition to that, if you have other questions, please put them in the comments below. If you have topics you think that would be really good to cover, please put them in the comments below. I try to, every time somebody uh, gives a suggestion, I screenshot it and try to make a video on it. So. Happy to help you in that regard. If you haven't already and you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please tell me why in the comments below. Really appreciate the feedback. And please subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, obliterate the subscribe button, they say. Uh, and book a call with me if you have any interest. Uh, Clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. And there's a link below. You can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. You can send an email to us through there. Uh, yeah, we will talk to you guys on the next video.